Fit for Life Radio coming at you with your host. We're, we swapped out Coach Will for Coach Ben this week. Mm-hmm. A little trade off. Just so everyone gets, you know, gets their fix for all you Ben fans out mm-hmm. there. <laughs> Zen Ben in the house. And then me, Coach Gary. The Rock. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> the Pebble. <laughs> <laughs> the immovable. But hey. Pebble. The same principle, right? Mm-hmm. Just strong winds. Just a lot win. smaller. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk about why failing doesn't make you a failure. Mm. All right, and this is great because it—I mean—it really applies to anything. You know, fitness stuff, nutrition stuff, movement stuff, career, life. Um, you know, uh, I think in today's day and age, we see you know Instagram, Facebook, social media. You see a lot of people's successes, right? You see them standing on the podium and all the you know, achievements, right? So then we think, oh, we should be achieving. And when we try something, we should instantly have the result that we see and we want. And people are kind of, it's almost like, well, if you fail or you aren't good at something right away, then you feel like a failure, you know? But you're not seeing the process that goes into achieving anything and we just kind of lose focus on that. Yeah, there's like a hundred attempts before they made that crazy basketball shot. But you don't see that. You don't see the frustration. You don't yeah. see the, the the crazy amount of work they put in to accomplish it. And uh, then you feel bad. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's definitely definitely like a pitfall, I guess, of of scrolling through and, and just looking at success after success and wondering why do I try so hard if. Uh, I only get like one success a day or two successes a day. Yeah. I think one example I know that I see and I feel bad, I know it confuses people. A lot of times you'll see on Instagram some, you know, fitness model or whatever, and they post, they'll always post their when they're having pizza and when they're having mm. ice cream, right? But, and then the person looking at it thinks, oh, that's how they eat. Why can't, you know, that's all it takes. But they're not seeing the other 30 meals a week that was just, you know, baked meat and veggies <laughs> and stuff like that so you're you're actually missing out on the entire process or they didn't see the three years that person you know was trying to learn how to cook and and eat these meals and didn't enjoy them it would mess up or even slips up now so you know you're just not getting the full picture so a good kind of way to look at it is when it comes to fit for life is understanding that really the whole you know every day is just trying you know there really is no end peak moment you're always going to be working in that when you are trying and things don't go as planned that doesn't mean you're a failure that doesn't mean you just stop or you quit or you get down on yourself Um, you know we we meet with a lot of clients and you know nowadays there's a million different gyms so most people have been to other gyms and tried other gyms and programs and feedback we get is a lot of times you know Gyms or programs will have their approach, and they're like, this is what you need to do. And then when the person cannot execute it, they are to blame. Well, well, oh, you you didn't do it right, or you didn't do it exactly. And that approach ultimately loses out in the long term, because then people just feel like a failure. No one does the same thing, like, at all. Like, to to actually have uh, somebody go, yeah, this is the rigid structure in which you must follow, um... You know, maybe maybe that person who made it, that's what they do. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, one th- like something that works for one person, I mean, is going to have to be tweaked slightly to fit your life. We're all really, really different. Yeah, um, I think everyone wants. So, perfect example: we're working with a client, and they're like, "Oh, they were asking about a meal plan, specific meal plan." And I get it. Like, I know everyone wants there and hopes there. Well, there's just this exact thing that tells me what to do. It's like the perfect thing. I can just do it, get, make everything happen, and it will be over with. But the thing is, you're avoiding the real problem, which is, you know, maybe you're making bad decisions and you just don't want to, so you want a perfect meal plan so you don't have to make any decisions. But eventually, you know, those foods that you're not able to avoid, or you know, late night eating that you're struggling with, like it's gonna still be there. Like you may be able to follow that meal plan for a month or two, and then you get exhausted of it, or you want different food, and you're gonna resort back to those other problems you've been having. And it's really trying to figure out 
what works for you. All right, so a perfect example is, you know, we have all our coaches and, you know, most of our, our clients, their goal is to get lean and live lean. So find some su- sustainable approach and our, you know, the coaches, we've been able to manage that for ourselves, but you have, you know, what, four, five different coaches and we all do things a little differently. Like we don't all eat the exact same foods, the exact same portions at the exact same times. And that's, so that's the thing. Like there is no perfect answer for everyone. Like it's more finding what works for you. And so that's, so if say you ask me for a meal plan, it's probably going to be foods I like and times that I like to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's going to be right for you. So the problem is then you, you take this rigid meal plan. That's like almost like a prescription and force it try to force it yeah you're going to get exhausted and just resort back to your old habits so it's just not the best approach um and and why why when you make one mistake is it so easy to color the whole thing red and to decide that you have failed on your diet it's a really really weird mindset to have that you've somehow failed on eating or or like fueling your body like you guys remember that we're we're just we're eating to survive I and mean, you eat so you don't die like let's let's get that down first so what you put in your mouth like you're using as fuel to live we're so disconnected from that because you can walk to a grocery store and you have a million options you don't have to hunt for your food you don't have to scavenge for it you can just get to walk in and you get to choose from a million different things from a million different companies what am i going to put in, our, in my mouth um getting closer to those roots might help some people how can you i mean you fail when you don't put anything in your mouth and you're getting closer to dying, you know, out in the woods, but we're not there anymore. Instead, we're trying to develop some structure and we're trying to develop the structure in such a way that is not only achieving our goal, but also we can live relatively comfortably um, while doing it. And then even farther than that, that we're taking care of our future self, our five year, our 10 year, our, our 25 year self that could eat this way continually. That's a big reason why crash diet doesn't work. That's also a big reason why, while it's not bad to get a structured diet plan, to fail or to mess up one time on this and throw the entire thing out is a terrible idea because you're not looking out for that future person or this sustainability that you're looking for. Instead, you're just worried about, I don't know, how you're going to look in a month. Um, and because you had you know all of the birthday cake instead of one slice, that you're going to look different or look, you know, I guess, bigger than you wanted to. Yeah. And, and really, so then kind of to step back on that, like Ben said, we do have a million options and that's good and bad. So there's a million, you know, so if you walk in the convenience store and there's a banana, but there's also four different types of donuts, you can choose the donuts, right? So it's making the decision to have the lower calorie option of the banana. That's also going to be easier to not overeat. So you have to look at, so say one day you, you pick the banana four days in a row, and then one day you, you pick the donuts. Maybe you're just, you had a stressful morning or something and whatever, and you pick it. That doesn't mean, oh, well, I just failed. I'm a failure, right? Well, you just had four days, A, where you're making the conscious decision, and even though you, then you had the day where you chose the donuts, well, you still thought about the banana, like you're aware, so you're on track, right? So it's not a failure, it's just, literally you learning and figuring out well then you dig deeper well maybe the problem is that you go and you get you're getting your breakfast at a convenience store every morning and you're exposed to all these choices so then you could look at it like well my meal plan you know it could have been the meal plan told you to eat a banana but really it's your environment that you need to control right so then from there you could say well maybe if i just start grocery shopping for the banana and eat it at home i'll have less temptation and that's so then you move forward. So you learned from that failure, mm-hmm. you know. So that's why failing does not make you a failure. Like you're moving forward, um, and it's and it's like tallying up all those little steps. It's not just as simple as just the meal plan. It's you know learning your food environment and just putting yourself in the right situations. And really, the only way to learn those things is to fail, you know. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, you know. It gets easier and then everything becomes automatic. So then you start grocery shopping and you buy enough to have at your house and you don't have to go to the convenience store for breakfast. And then all that seems overwhelming right now. But once it's your habit, then basically 
it's easy. So, and then now let's spin that around for exercise, right? So we meet a lot of the reason people don't join a gym, especially like a training type gym, is they think, oh, well, I'm not good at exercise, you know, I'm not gonna do it right. And yeah, they don't start. Or they'll go in and maybe feel like they couldn't do it as perfect as someone who they saw in the gym who probably has been doing it for years and years mm -hmm. and played sports and has basically been training their whole life. And they quit and they think they're a failure. You know, so Ben, you want to talk about that, like movement, like how even oh, all of us yeah. basically are still failing. Like I still talk to you about, man, my hinge and deadlift form doesn't feel sure. right and I want to get better at it. And I've been training 12 years. Mm -hmm. So am I a failure because I don't have a perfect deadlift after 12 years? Right. I mean, it, it may feel that way because then you look at some other people like, you know, some some freaking really strong young dude who's been doing it for five years, deadlifts way more weight than you've ever deadlifted in your life, and you definitely feel like a failure at that point. I think the big thing is why is there such a thick line between success and failure? Why is it so, if you didn't succeed, like succeed completely and totally, then you've failed somehow? I, I would wager a guess that like either succeeding and failing, they're going to both happen at the same time. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process, so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash provengrit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process, so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. Um, you can make a good choice or a bad choice. You can properly execute a deadlift um, at a weight that you've never deadlifted before. And so you could coin that as a success. But maybe you used your right glute more than your left glute, for instance. So in that way, it's a failure. Uh, yeah, I, I ate a donut. Um today instead of a banana. Okay, so you failed on making a, a what, what's the better choice between the two, but overall throughout the week, maybe you still met your macro goal. That's a success. I think looking at a choice, a movement, or any of these things 
in a, uh, like a, like a microscopic view where you're just looking at that one thing and putting so much weight on this one choice is really, it's affecting the rest of your choices because that's all we have. We have choices to make. And once you make a choice, whether it's a good decision, bad decision, whether it's a success or failure, guess what you have coming up right after that? Another choice. And you have to decide, again, something else. And you're gonna either succeed or fail with that too. You, you really should not spend time getting hung up on that choice you made previously. You shouldn't think to yourself, okay, uh, yeah, like that was, that was a huge mistake. Wow, I really suck. And I, I really need to start putting all of these, um, uh, I guess, labels on who I am as a person based on the choice I made. If you spend time doing that, you're not gonna be ready for your next choice. And like really, yeah, like everything is a little bit of success, a little bit of failure. The more good choices you make, I guess the more successes you have. Um, that can produce some serious momentum, just like Gary said, become automatic because of that momentum. And pretty soon it becomes a little bit easier to make better choices. Um, but yeah, I really, I don't think there is such a thick line between success and failure. I think that it's, it's very, very, um, I guess, blurred. And if anything, um, you're probably standing in both 24-7. Um, and I guess just to kind of circle back to, to relating it to movement, no one's movement is perfect. No one's symmetrical. There's actual anatomical truth to that. Like there, there's no perfect mirrored image left to right side. Therefore, everyone will always have compensations, be susceptible to injury. Um, and, and, you know, not to say we don't strive for it, but um, that perfection is unattainable. So we're all living in kind of a little bit of a failure, a little bit of a coming short of perfect. But you know, making a good choice, you should feel really, really good about that. Going ahead and executing a deadlift with proper breath to protect your back, uh, with you know proper muscle engagement, even if it takes away 20 pounds of weight you could have possibly done, that's a huge success, and it keeps you safe and it keeps you fighting the next day. Yeah, yeah. and no matter where you are, you're going to always, like as you learn from your failures and, and move forward, you're just gonna f kind of uh, think about it leaning against the wall. You're always gonna be leaning against that wall and it's gonna be moving ever so slowly, but there will always be more failures. That your old you would have, you know, you would have loved to be, be in that place. So it's really just changing your mindset to failing and succeeding. And ultimately, really, the only way you can fail is if you just completely give up or stop or throw in the towel. Um, and, you know, ultimately, the more you fail, the more. You succeed is really the way to look at it. Yeah. I, I guess I guess there is like a thicker line between like failure and success. When you think about like I guess driving off a cliff is kind of a failure. Yeah. You can't come back. Yeah. From. So I suppose there is like maybe one or two <laughs> instances where, but I mean even that like but I guess barring like the complete failures, when do you say that like failure in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing? I mean just kind of like you were saying about how else are you gonna learn? Yeah. Um, like I, I see what you're saying like you could almost argue like isn't failing more important than succeeding what do you I mean I guess you learn from success too but it, it only shows you oh I'm doing the right thing that's cool that's yeah. good um, or this but, but you don't work. stay there right right you can't grow from yeah that. you don't just sit in success so from failure yeah. you grow I mean you have to you have to change you have to probably navigate new waters you have to try something new you have to take a different approach you have to intercept like intercept like your either your, your choice or your your decision making um to to find like the right spot so that you end up successful it might be worth your time to stay in at least yeah like to stay in failure longer than you stay in success or push up against that wall um it, i mean if you're interested in growing as a person if you're yeah. actually interested in becoming better um you should you should probably invite that type of failure yeah and just for some real world examples so you can like wrap your brain around it because i know we you know we've been saying success failure a lot let's say okay you so a common one is so most people when they start a diet nutrition base and we use diet nutrition as an example a lot because ultimately that's the feedback we get you know like i'll poll i had a poll the other day what on Facebook, what do you struggle with more? Consistently exercising or consistent nutrition? And literally, you know, say 150 people filled it out. There's like two people that said 
consistent exercise, everyone else was nutrition. And I think it's because people do see nutrition as black, white, fail, succeed, um, and di diet on off. So, but it doesn't work like that. When you, when you decide, hey, I'm gonna eat better, it's not just about the food. Deciding to eat better is not one decision. It's then, well, you need to shop differently. You need to have a different relationship with food. You know, all these things have to change. So it's a lot going on, right? So when we talk about what's a failure, so say you, um, you go and, and you went out to eat and you order you know, the grilled chicken breast salad and you ask for the dressing on the side and you just use a little bit, right? That's, you, that's typically would be considered a success. But then you didn't grocery shop that week, so then when you get home, you still have a cabinet full of I don't know, uh, Doritos, Cheez-Its, yeah, Cheez uh, or for me it'd be graham crackers, mm -hmm. which speaking, like, do people even, do, do people eat graham crackers anymore? Yeah, I, is, I, is I, that think, just... I think it's dying out, mm. but, or the I, Teddy Grahams, but s'mores are always going to keep Okay, them. so, but you have a cabinet full of that stuff, and then you eat it, and then you think, I just failed, I'm a failure, right, but it's like, not really, you, you normally would have then gone out and just gotten uh, the burger and fries for lunch, so you made a good, so... You're, you're making progress, but you just learned, ultimately, I resorted to these snacks because I didn't have any other food to eat in my house. So from that, from that, we'll call it failing, you really just learned, I need to be better prepared. I need to start grocery shopping. So then that weekend, you go grocery shopping with a list, so you have dinners prepared. Well, then you just got a little better. You just took a giant step forward, and now you're, you're succeeding, but... You're succeeding because you failed, because you're putting an effort, because you're trying, because you're learning from your mistakes. Um, and, and you're just slowly, like that's the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you didn't, and you, you had to look at it too. You, if, you, if you got caught up in the emotion of it or you started beating yourself up right away, you started throwing a bunch of stuff at you about, you know what, you always screw up like this, or you always, all, all these really, really negative patterns that we, that we come up with. To, to beat ourselves up and to keep ourselves down, like you you, you couldn't stay there. You had to you had to step out of it and you had to look at it and, and follow the sequence that Gary just said to go. You know what? If I if I changed this small thing, that this whole cascade wouldn't happen this way. Again, I'm not mad at myself that this happened, but I do want it to change. Yeah. And just the ability to look at it that way and try and keep the you know the constant berate that we give ourselves that we're not good enough. Um, out of it for long enough to learn something, then the next time that you run into that situation, I bet you do a little bit better. Yeah. And that's the problem with having cut and dry, like do this meal plan and, you know, the hardcore trainers like, yeah, do this. If you don't do it, well, you failed. Well, the problem is it's just overlooking that there's so many decisions that go into it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like give yourself that slack, like understand that like, it is that journey, it is that process. And then make each day kind of like analyze all your decisions. And then, you know, be aware of those decisions and eventually you, you have to change the decisions you make. And that's the hard part then is the change. So then once you bring awareness and you shift your mindset to more positive and not negative, then the last stage is, is then actually making true change and making the right decisions more consistently, which is really an, a whole nother episode Mm. But yeah, I don't know. I think I think that that real world example should resonate with a lot of people, and you know. And the cool thing is, like, yeah, you apply that to your nutrition; it carries over into everything else. You know, your career, your business. It's the same thing. You know, when you know a lot of times, you know, when you're 25, you're you're scared to. You think that you know you're gonna finish school and get a job and and just move right into stuff but really you have to fail a little you have to maybe get a job and not like it or be bad at it and learn and improve and sidestep and step back and then maybe step forward try to um, take a try to take a shortcut real quick and then have it bite you in the ass real hard like that's yep. a that's one of the best things to learn because then you learn that you have to put in the work um yeah i hope i hope everybody tries to do that early yeah learn it and then you know, we all we all realize that working hard is the only way to get it. Yeah. So as you, it's just a mindset that permeates everything, and yeah, we just want we just see a lot of people who who really get down on themselves for not being perfect all the time, and like have that, you know, call themselves a failure 
for failing. And ultimately, that's not true. Like, if you're failing, that means you're trying. And really, as, as you, you're a success at that point. So yeah, yeah. you're just learning from those failures, evolving, and trying to work towards a sustainable approach to get you where you, you want to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're proud of you. Yeah. You got this. All right. <laughs> so I think, I think we'll leave you guys with that. Maybe we'll come back later with some more on actual change, mm-hmm. change mindset, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. As always, you can hit us up on social media. And yeah, if you have questions, find us. Instagram's a good way. Mm-hmm. Facebook, mm-hmm. email, all that stuff's on our website, which is coastalfitnessva.com. And we'll catch you next time around. Yes, yes. All right, holler. Bye bye. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at coastalfitnessva.com or garydeagle.com. We'll see you next time.